Welcome to the best commander podcast in the world. This time, the top 20 of 2020. 20. I'm your host, Joe 20 Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, 23 years old. Oh, there's no last part. And we're the nitpicking nerds <laughs> bringing you top 20 of 2020. We're both in our 20s. This is going to take more than 20 minutes. So really it all just coalesces is perfect. This is just the best. Oh God. I'm only 20 for less than a month. Ooh, good yeah. thing we got this done. Uh, good thing it's... Uh, yeah, Joe's I, last month in his 20s. That's true. Yeah. Last month in my 20s. So $20 is a patron tier. You can join oh, yeah, the patron perfect. in any tier, but 20 is one of them. The Discord has way more than 20 people in it. So you yeah. could be... One of them. But we measured in increments of 20 because yeah. that's what we do. That's just how the system works. That All right, makes... let's get into the video. You know, this is really simple. There's seven or eight <laughs> sets that came out. I think seven, if you want to count the uh, Zendikar Commander, which we do. Seven sets came out. We're taking all the cards that came out in 2020, new releases. What are the best 20? Yeah, what are the best new cards for Commander? Brand new. Not reprints, not anything like that. We're looking at cards that were printed for the first time this year year there's a lot of good ones yeah and if you're excited uh next week's podcast we're going to talk all about this whole year of commander but let's get into it number 20 is yorian sky nomad take that into consideration this is number 20. three is Aureus hybrid is Aureus hybrid for a four or five flyer it has companion but that's not relevant because you can't companion it in commander when it enters the battlefield exile any number of non-land permanents you control and own Return them to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. This is a perfect opportunity to mention a couple different things. Number one, we have done top tens of all the sets that we're talking about, although this list is not a direct reflection of that. We've changed opinions on some things. Yorian wasn't on our top ten. I think us and other people slept on it because you can't companion it, so you you kind of just you just cast it aside. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, but yeah, like he said that we have changed a lot of our opinions and you'll notice that throughout this list there's a lot of there's some there are more cards in here that just weren't on our original list because we again slept on them yorian though super strong it's a it's a great flicker the, the thing is it does non-land permanents there's really not much that does it other than brago so brago and yorian are like two of a kind the only things that are going to blink your like enchantments that have etbs but yorian is zero effort and you can set up blink loops where you blink your whole board every other turn yes with you can. Uh, like charming prince Flicker Wisp. Yeah. Yeah, anything like that. It's it's easy to just get a ton of value out of stuff like that because Yorian does end step. Also any number, so easy to get a ton of value. Number 19, Kinnon, Bonder, Prodigy, another Ikoria card. He's green, blue for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. Five green, blue. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human creature from among them onto the battlefield, and the rest go on the bottom in a random order. This wasn't on our list originally either. This kind of rose to be part of like the cream of the crop. I think Brawl was some of the reasons people were like, this is so annoying. And then there's like CDH stuff you can do with it too. It, it just makes mana rocks and mana elves tap for double. Actually, I remember specifically when talking about this card, it was like number nine or number 10. We, we, well, and then we pushed it back to like 11 and just didn't make the list. I remember that oh, about yeah. Ikoria. It was definitely like one of the last cuts when we talked about it. Um, but again, this card just goes off very easily. It's a weird deck. Also, when he's your commander, you like want mana rocks in your green deck? Strange. Yeah, or you could just play um, Elf Ball. Yeah. It just this is it's the enabler and the payoff. I hate these cards. That but it makes them good. Yeah. It's like oh, here's a bunch of extra mana. Oh, here's a mana sink. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that either. I think that that's something with that we need lazy. To, we need to avoid in the future. Um, it's caused a lot of issues. Things like Chulain and Corval just insane. They're just. Blech. They just become like these boring good stuff. We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll get on that next week. Kitten's uh, a great card. You can play it. It is actually legal in the format, so it all my complaints don't matter at all. You should still play it. It's yeah, good. yeah. Kinnon's still incredibly strong. I do think a way that they could have fixed Kinnon. Why does he not just say when a non-human creature taps for mana? He's a bonder, so it makes sense. No, he helps mind stones. We, yeah, exactly. It's so stupid. It's just it's it's clearly pushed for commander for brawl. I don't like it. All right. Next is number 18. What uh, is it? Confounding Conundrum. One in the blue for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, if it's not the first land, 
that entered the battlefield for them this turn, they must return a land from the battlefield to their hand. Yeah, this card, the annoying part is draw a card. It makes it a free roll. If you have any enchantment synergies, well, this card can just go in your deck. It now replaces itself and is an enchantment. Oh, you're like a hard control deck? Just play it on turn two. Now you don't have to worry about cultivates, and it's going to annoy the hell out of them. So the thing about this card is, I want to say, this might be higher technically on this list in power. Because... But it's just like, it's a boring stacks piece. Like, if we go back in time where we're doing Ravnica year, I'm not going to put Rest in Peace at number one, even though it might be the best card from that year. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fair. I, it's it's good. I don't think it's... It's, like, passively good, and mm -hmm. it relies on what your opponents are doing to be good. Obviously, one in a blue draw card is bad. It actually just is not good enough for Commander. Yes. So I think it, we have it at the right spot, because um, unless they're doing the thing then they, you don't get any benefit. It's a very power level dependent thing because as soon as you hit, I think um, it's bad in CDH. Right. Uh, but right before that, eights and nines, where there's a ton of fetch lands, yeah. I, the card's incredibly good. Um, I, I think the card is super strong. I'm just not a, again, this is the second card in the world that I'm just not a fan of. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the, the way they went about making it. That has no impact on how good it is. These cards are all amazing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number 17, Opposition Agent. Two and a black for a 3-2 flash creature. You control opponents while they search, and you can search for them, take a card, exile it, and then you can cast it for mana of any color. Yeah, this card's really good. This card's really cool, too. I think this this is the perfect kind of design space for Commander. I love... It covers a lot of ground. Um, we get Tutor Hate, which Tutors are a huge problem in EDH. They've been discussed for a while. Like, Obviously, it's tough to like pick a spot to ban, but I get that. But like, I want Tutor Hates. I think every color should have Tutor Hates, personally, because I... I think they're important. I love Ava Mind Sensor too. That card is really fun. And Opposition Agent is just another version of that. I think, I really think we should have more search hate in EDH. I, that, that's just because I think that's what slows some, some games down the most. Yeah, that, that can lead games to feel very samey. Exactly. That's a lot of the problem I have with like Mono Black. Well, maybe if they didn't have Cabal Coffers every game, the games would be more fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, I actually have started um, drawing. We, we have started drawing back on our power level a little bit. We were up near like nines nine and a halfs we've drawn down to like uh eight, eight and a halfs uh well cutting... not a, not a direct nerf we just start building less powerful decks well because well one of the main reasons is we're cutting tutors well uh, yeah but we still have good decks whether the new decks we're making have are been less powerful yeah exactly yeah we've been cutting tutors a lot um i've i know that i just built the liza deck it's in black i have i had grim tutor i cut it and that's the only tutor i had i have no tutors in that deck right this is gonna be more unique games uh, opposition agent was up at the top for commander legends although if once we bring in everything else i think it just it's not it's not busted this card is relies on what your opponents do you have to get a tutor once you do it's like a it's a good one for one exchange i don't think uh well i guess it's a two for one i just don't think this card's like anything busted oh it's not busted at all it's, it's, it's really this great is, this is yeah this is um this is probably one of my favorite pr uh, printings this year i love this card so much really cool uh, 16, it is a cycle of lands. The only the only cards we group together are lands. Triomes, it is uh, Inditha, let's see if I can do this, Ketria, Rohrin, Savai, and Zagoth Triomes, the, the wedge colored. Yep, so the Triomes are really awesome. They come in tap, they tap for three different colors, and they have all the types, so they are fetchable, and they cycle for three minutes. I think these are incredibly good. As soon as you hit a three color combination, four color combination that has any of these in them, you put as many in your deck as you can. Uh, they're really awesome. I've been nothing but happy with them. I've been playing an Omnath deck. They're literally almost always the first fetch target. Anything that's not competitive and has these three colors, you're in. You have, you have like, quote unquote, no excuse not to just put this in your deck. It'll be great. You have a fetch target. It helps. It probably helps like weird color combinations. Like Teamer probably wants this a lot. Okay. If you're like trying to Teamer spell sling, you know, you really need your stupid steam vents. So now this is another steam vents, but it also makes green. Yeah, that's completely All fair. these cards are amazing. Yeah, I mean, Triomes are great. Um, they, there's, there's not much to talk about. They're great fixing, and they cycle when you don't need them. We're not ignoring the power level of lands. Lands help decks play magic, so there's going to be more lands on here. <laughs> yeah, we love lands. Uh, next, we have Dismantling Wave, which is two and a white. Uh, destroy an artifact or enchantment for each opponent that you have, and then you can pay six white white to cycle it and destroy all artifacts and enchantments. And you also get to draw a card because you cycle it. Yeah, that's a nice corner case. Mostly this is a three for one for three mana in white. White needs those. It's also a board wipe when you need it to be. I love the well, form of one. 
I, I love the versatility on cards like this. Um, I love that you could take your three for one when you need it. Uh, just get rid of the three best artifacts and enchantments on the board, and then flip the flip the switch and be like, okay, it's a super light game. There's a ton of artifacts and enchantments on the board. I'm going to get rid of all of them. Yeah, if somebody's pl somebody's playing an enchantment deck or an artifact deck, you just have a destroy target player. A uh, yeah. little bomb in your hand that can't be countered. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. But you take your three for one. This card's very nice. Um, I love these removal spells. It, I like that um, white is getting very good at doing what the, one of the things it's supposed to be very good at, artifact and enchantment removal. I, I like that we're getting the good spells this year. We got another one that's actually on this list up higher. I mean, there's there's white cards on the top 20 commander card list. That's already, like, pretty good. Yeah, we were sad um, because we it's there's a lot of cards that are white that we put on like our top cards, but it's like when it came to this list, we're like, oh, they don't actually make it because all the other colors have better stuff. Yeah, it's like Mangara. It's like great card, cool card, great for white. Yeah, Keeper of the Core didn't make it. Those great. are like amazing white cards. They're great for white, and that's sad. I don't, I don't want white cards to be great for white. I want white cards to be great for magic. Well, yeah, but do you want more Smothering Tithes or do you want more Mangaras? I don't want more. I want something in between there. Oh, so it's like a happy middle ground. Yeah, like a middle ground in between like this stupid card that goes in every deck yeah. and this card that only goes in white decks. You need the. I want the the middle ground. Like this, I think that this is the perfect example of a middle ground, a dismantling wave type card. All right, number fourteen, Fiend Artisan, Golgari Hybrid, a Golgari Hybrid for a one one. Gets plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. And you can pay X, Golgari Hybrid, tap this creature, sacrifice another creature to search for a creature with mana cost X and just put it into play. This is a Birthing Pod type card. It goes really well in your creature decks that want to, um, if you like Birthing Pod, you probably like this card in your deck. It's just Toolbox. You yeah. just turn any creature into whatever you need right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, this card's great. It also turns into a, a fatty monster. You're going to play it in your Marin type decks, your Carador type decks, any deck like that that's mil self milling and putting creatures in its own graveyard. With decks it, that care about power, if you have Great Henge, this is just makes it two mana. It could just be a 6 6. Yeah, this can just be a 6 6 so easily, especially when you're self milling. If you're playing that Stitcher Supplier, it could just be, it could be, come out, it, you go a Stitcher Supplier, mill two creatures, and now it's a 3 3 on turn two automatically. That's not bad. And then you get to sacrifice a Stitcher Supplier. Make it like a 5-5 five, five or a 6-6. Six, six, just smack somebody with your build-your-own like Sarah Ascendant without lifelink. Yeah. Uh, Fiend Artisan is just a very strong card. It turns into a beefy monster if you need it to be. And it's just a toolbox card. We this is like epitome of card that didn't need to be in any set but could have been in any set to sell packs. It's a fiend. It's a nightmare. It couldn't have been in any set. Ikoria has nightmares. They had, they had new Tarmogoyf question mark print it out and they were like all right when do we need to sell packs <laughs> like, all right just throw this in there nah, they didn't i don't think i don't i don't think they need to throw it in the because they threw a lot of stuff to sell packs in the icoria is pretty sweet Tri triomes and godzilla is gonna sell packs it certainly will well they, well they wanted standard too that's fair. like the, the the lands was a good was a good start all right so now we're on number 13 which is follow the retreat um, which is three and a white for an enchantment. Landfall, you can choose one of two. Either you get a 2-2 two, two cat or put a plus one, plus one counter on all your creatures and they gain vigilance until end of turn. This card was so much better than we thought initially. Uh, I spec threw it in one of my decks and I completely dominated the entire game. Oh, this game, this card absolutely takes over games. I have it in my yeah, on that then, deck. Then you threw it in the deck and then it completely dominated games. And then we're a, like, it's okay. A, it's a landfall card. Um, yeah. If you... All right, if you're playing enough fetch lands, if you if you care about landfall, this card's great. If you're going wide, it cares. If you like tokens, it cares. It's just it's very versatile in what it does, and it, it fits in the lives of Nick's. Like we said, token strategies, landfall strategies, and uh, plus one plus one counters. There are three different strategies that this card just fits right into. I have it in a good stuff deck, and I just have fetch lands, and you just make a bunch of cats, put a bunch of counters, put on pressure. It's a threat that has a one time cost, and then never costs you mana ever. Um, yeah. It's funny because um, when you throw the Vigilance on there, it becomes super relevant. The ability to um, make all of your creatures be able to attack and not have to worry about a crackback is amazing. Someone's going to want to crackback when you hit them for... It's not even like this is like win the game, it's just chunk you for 7, 10, just chip down your life total. No, Father Chia I think is a perfect card um, uh, for EDH. It, I, this, again, this is this is where I want this card my white awesome. cards. It's so good. This is where I want my white cards. I didn't realize this card was so good when it first came out, but this is this is right where you want it. It doesn't fit in all decks, but it fits in a lot of decks and not just white decks. Totally. But it is like a white card. You know, they, there's no other color that really would get this. Next, number 12, another Zendikar card, Thieving Skydiver. 
one in a blue, two one, kicker X, but X can't be zero. And when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you steal an artifact with that mana cost. You just take it. And if it's an equipment, just goes right onto the skydiver. Uh, thieving skydiver thieves a lot of soul rings. Like that's the main card that you're gonna get with this when you play EDH. Everyone's got soul ring. You take it, you spend three mana, you steal a soul ring. It's gonna feel great every single time. You know what card steals soul rings? Dak Faden. That card's amazing. This is a, I don't. This is like a slightly worse Dak Faden with flying. It just depends on how you look at it. Um, it can be better. It just depends on your deck. If you care about the body at all, flying, flying. Uh, the cre If you care about the creature, basically in any way, it is because think if when you think about Dak Faden, realistically, Dak Faden comes down and steals a soul ring and almost always dies. Sometimes he just he, dies. <laughs> sometimes he pluses. It's it's rare though. Um, the thieving skydiver is going to survive back to your turn way more often than the deck. So there is situations, and there's a lot of situations, where Thieving Skydiver is going to be better. Yeah, how also, about uh, Dak Fane's red? Yeah, also yeah, also Thieving Skydiver, also in blue. Also. Uh, also only blue. Also. Also. Also only blue. <laughs> so you don't have to play, uh, it, you can play it in more decks. Yes, just a quick note, you can steal Mana Crypt, but you have to pay one mana for the kicker. Also. <laughs> Moving oh God. on. Please, moving, moving on to no more also's. Yeah, moving on to the next one. Number 11, we have Enemy Crowd Lands, uh, which were printed in Commander Legends, and they come in untapped as long as you have two or more opponents. Spoiler alert, you're CDH. You always have two or more opponents. These are untapped duels. They don't have types, but they're real strong. They're completely fantastic. They're just amazing. These are, after fetches, they might, and like, there's like, so fetches and duels are like pretty good. They might just be the best two color lands yeah. after that. It's tough to be fetches, uh, fetches and then duels. Or oh, you can't. I'm just saying, like, after that, like, these are the third best. So I'm so glad they completed the cycle. Millions and millions and millions of decks are going to want these. Yeah, this, exactly. Uh, any two color deck wants these, any three color decks. Uh, it, if you're not super fetch based, four and five color decks will gladly take some of these. Yeah, maybe you're leaning towards, you play one or two because you lean towards that, like green and black, maybe, are your main two. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah, you're a salt. You're you're like a salt deck, but you happen to be playing a Traxa. Yeah, so you play the green blue one and the green black one. Feel great about it. Any crowd lands, super awesome. All right, now into the top ten. These are the real heavy hitters of 2020. Number ten, Luminous Broodmoth, aka Mothra, Supersonic Queen. Two white white for a three four flyer. If a creature you control without flying dies, you just get it back with flying. Yeah, this card's sweet. All your creatures come back with flying. So if you're on the ground and most of your creatures are on the ground, you're going to feel awesome about this. You this gives second life. You throw sack outlets in your deck, and you can just take advantage of this so easily. ETBs, death triggers, you have it all. The only thing I... The one tiny complaint was, if this was legendary, it'd be awesome. Yeah, I would have built a <laughs> it's deck It's not even a complaint. This. this card's just amazing. I would have built a deck around this. I mean, the only thing... It feels legendary because... The Mothra side. The Mothra side. I mean, a Luminous Broodmoth, I can see there being tons of those. It's a big bug. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's a gigantic bug, but... Mothra, we know is there's only one Mothra. She's a super sonic queen. Yeah, maybe you've heard of her. Yeah, She's number nine. Awesome. Above Mothra, Crowdlands, Felidar Retreat, Opposition Agent. What's number nine? Uh, it's Balaged Recovery. It's an MDFC. So on one side you have a land that enters tapped and it taps for green, and on the other side you have Regrowth for three mana. Yeah, it's two and a green sorcery. I feel like this card replaces regrowth in almost every situation for me. I can't think of wanting regrowth ever again. <laughs> I don't think I ever wanted regrowth, but I want this. And this is just going to be in almost every green deck we make for the next 50 years. I wanted regrowth. On the only deck I wanted ever wanted regrowth in was Wart. Raid Mother. Oh, Wart the Raid Mother. And then this is your better version. Yeah. It's just a land if you need it to be. Turn one. Kept a two lander? No, this is your hand's a three lander now. This is the best effect on any one of these lands, even the MDFCs. The thing is, well, they're all MDFCs. Yeah, uh, I meant the mythics. Even, oh, even even the mythic ones. I think this is the actual best individual card. We're talking about spell side. Yes, the, the front spell facing one is the best uh, from the whole set of Zendikar. Although other cards end up being better, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Um, for uh, for reasons we will speak of yeah it's the best front side it's the best sorcery the actual factual best spell yeah it's your best card it's a free roll inclusion it's budget decks want this and they probably won't even want it for very long because i bet this is going to be like 
a five or six dollar uncommon. It's already two dollars. Um, I just two dollars from z- the set that just came out. Yeah, the set. Yeah, the most recent uh, standard set, uh, two dollar uncommon. Frustratingly, we've opened zero. We've drafted it like twelve times. Yeah, I had to buy one. <laughs> Ugh, come on, man. I'm just complaining about my luck. Number eight, Heliod's intervention from Theros Beyond Death. X white white for an instant. You can either destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments, or you can gain twice X life. Obviously, the twice X life is just gravy because we get an X for one where X is the number of mana we have lying around. Yeah, uh, this card's really strong. Um, my only complaint about this card is I don't I don't want to keep getting so much stronger like white artifact enchantment removal. If you if you print a new one every year, it won't matter. There's just, you can't play all of them. You play four, and then you just keep bumping out the worst one. Yeah, exactly. Like these, you know. I think either I think it was uh, for me dismantling wave bumped out like crush contraband. It's like, well, okay, that was a pretty big bump, but n- now we can just stop because I don't think there's gonna be there's not many more places you can go with it. Yeah, this card's card, amazing. This card's amazing, and the thing I like about this is it's very versatile in that the life gain can be super relevant. If you put six mana in this, uh, you gain eight life. Yeah. And that's that's nothing to scoff at. It's an instant. It's an instant. If you don't have any targets, it just does something else. And if you're in a life gain deck, it's going to be way more relevant. And there's the worst case scenario of you pay one white white and you destroy something that's urgent. It's just That's three mana. That's your generous gift mana cost. Yeah, and I mean, at one more mana, you get a two for one. At, th- at five mana, you get a three for one. And it just... It, Again, it just scales from there. Every single mana is another for one. <laughs> another for one. <laughs> you make four one tokens with this card. Okay, number seven. Deadly Relic. Three and a black for an instant exile target creature. If you control your commander, you can cast this card for free. Well, free exile creature, huh? In black, even. Not even white. Yeah, this card's really strong. It just exiles the best threat in the field. If your commander is, is cheap and is going to be on the field constantly, this this card's like a free roll. It's so good. Or if your commander is not really a threat. You know, um, Queen Marchessa always comes to mind for that. It's like, it's come out. It already really did its thing. It's not going to do too much more, too many more things. Yeah, exactly. The, like, what are you going to do? Spend that removal spell on Queen Marchessa? Well, I'll just play it again, and it gives me the monarchy back. Right, or I just won't play it. I got the monarchy forever. You know, it's in the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, this card's super strong. Not the fanciest card, but it is another just, hey, this is probably better than your best spot removal spell that hits creatures. Yeah, exactly. Next, we have Jeweled Lotus. Jeweled Lotus is only number six for 2020? Yes. Yes, it is, BZ. Why don't you calm down? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Jeweled Lotus is really strong, but you can only cast. you can only use it to cast your commander, which is its downside, obviously. Because you can't cast other spells. It does help with Storm, and it's really good in a lot of decks. Probably a lot of CDH decks that really like it. Um, but, again, uh, it's only commander spells that you can cast. It's super, super, super strong turns, like, one through three. And then after that, it falls off a lot. There are no ways to abuse the mana this makes other than playing your commander. You just cannot spend it on anything else. If you have your commander out, this card has no text unless you care about the artifact that is the actual card. Mm -hmm. And those decks, you know, get it in there all day. Joy Road and stuff we already mentioned. Once your commander's out, this doesn't do anything. So I just think it's not as good as the five cards above it. Yeah, that being said, it's still the number six card printed all year. The card's very, very strong. Yeah, out of how many, what, 2,000 commander cards or whatever, how many we got? Yeah, this card comes down. It sacrifices. You get to play your commander super early if you draw it early. Again, late game, it'll help pay for taxes on your commander. That might be annoying. It is good. We're it's not, amazing. We're not the this nine card that this is card so, is great. It's a design mistake. I don't think they should have made it. It was made to sell packs. It's kind of like maybe, you know, like even casual play groups might push them to be less maybe less fun or they have some non games. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's how good it is. It literally can make a whole game not fun. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, but moving on cuz there's not much to talk about. No, that's it. Anymore with this card. Uh we have Fierce Guardianship, another one of the same cycle as Deadly Deadly Relic. It's two and a blue counter target non-creature spell, but if you control your commander, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. A free negate, you say. Uh, it's a free negate. Uh, it's really strong. Again, if your commander, the same situation as Deadly Rock. If your commander is going to sit on the battlefield, it's a non-threat. It's really cheap. 
this card's very, very good. Any free counter spell is good. I'm actually, I mentioned, I don't want there to be free counter spells. Now, it's just, it's a boring design space that we've gone through and seen now like 10 times now. You keep going back to the well. Pax of Negation, Force of Will, the reprint Force of Will for Modern, this. Um, this, this unlike Daily Relic, you know, maybe if, if you have a high target commander that is going to be dead a lot, you might not want Deadly Relic, but if you have a high target commander that's going to be targeted a lot, you do want Fierce Guardianship. You yep. only have to protect your commander once with it, and then the card did the maximum amount it could do. Yeah, it's, it is a one for one and it is a counter spell, so you have to take that into consideration. But it is zero mana when you have your commander, which is really what pushes this card, obviously. Obviously, two and a blue negate is awful. Garbage. Yeah, total garbage. So it's only put it in your decks where you're going to be casting it for free. Because if you're not casting it for free, this card's not worth its mana. Yeah, aggressive combo decks, totally going to shine there. Number four, from Theros Beyond Death, it's Thassa's Oracle, blue, blue, for a 1-3. When it enters the battlefield, you look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. But none of that matters, because if your deck size is less than that number, you win. This is, um, this is probably our CDH inclusion, let's be honest. Um, this card completely changed CDH. It did. It changed the, the landscape of how you actually win a game. It literally um, has a two-card combo with the Mana Consultation. Which I think is so stupid. I Like, that exists. I won't say anything else, but that the fact that that exists is really dumb. Yeah, it's, it wasn't intended to be like it is, but... It is, so you it can do it. It is what it is, as the kids say. Oh, don't say that. Uh, <laughs> please. Everything is what it is. Always. Yeah, that's true. But Thus Oracle, very strong. It's a combo piece. It's a finisher. It, it does so much. You can flicker it. It's card selection. It doesn't draw you cards, but it scries a bunch. Yeah, it does. It fixes your draws. This card does a lot. Um, if you're in a flicker deck with high blue devotion, it's really awesome. It can just win. And the fact that it, it not that it can just win. It says the words, win the game on it. And it will do those things quite often. Yeah. And I, a couple, of, you know, like I just wanted to say, the best cards of 2020. Five, four, three, two, and one have something in common that we'll get to. Yes. <laughs> Interestingly enough. Uh, yeah. Three breaks the cycle, at least. Kind of, but it is a cycle. Uh, it is a cycle. It's a cycle of the mythic MDFCs, which are monocolored spells on the front side. On the back side, they are monocolored lands that produce one color, but they can enter untapped if you pay three life. And that's what makes these so good. They're untapped lands. So in your one and two color decks, these things shine. They're like so close to auto includes in one to two color decks. They just replace a stupid mountain or you replace a spell and now you have, you're have you going to get flooded and screwed X percent less of the time. Yes. The thing that's really important here in, to realize, yeah, these cards stink as spells. Oh. None of them are very good spells. No. But the fact is you're taking out a mountain and three life in commander is nothing. You start at 40. We've mentioned how... 40 is so much life. I will gladly play three life for an untapped plane. It doesn't Some, feel bad at all. Sometimes. Turn one, you got nothing to do. Play a tapped. And now you've noticed zero difference. You haven't paid any life. Yeah, exactly. And, oh, man. It, these cards are amazing. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes there's there's actually no difference from what a planes would have done for you. These cards are just silly good because they are free spells. They're, they, they don't... They get to one for one in EDH, which is great. You literally just take out a planes... And you put this in. It's not like you have to do like some weird math uh, like you do with like uh, Zendikar Rising Limited. Yeah. Where you want you, you want to play like a higher amount. No, no. You just, if, you're, if your land number is 36, your land number is still 36, but one of them is an MDFC. One of them can make two 4-4 four, four angels or one of them can get a two for one in, in a attrition game. These are the most free roll inclusions in 2020 that's where the power is in these cards it's just the fact that they're going to make a lot of decks i think every I, no joke it's tough for me it's there's not many examples that aren't going to fit this one in two color decks you play the one or the two i every single time i i just built eliza deck i snapped off both of them mm -hmm. i'm actually playing like five mdfcs in that deck we've been trying out some of the higher tier tap land ones too we'll yeah. talk about we can Maybe go back to that at some point. We, we're going to talk about them in every deck tech now because they're stupidly good. They're very good. And we're about to double the number of them, so I'm excited and a little nervous. Yes. Next, number two from the year 2020, which actually has two twos in it. So this is number two from this year. 
<laughs> it's Hole Breacher, and it is two and a blue for a 3-2 with Flash. If a player would draw a card that isn't the card that they would draw for their draw stop, they don't draw that card. Instead, you get a treasure. We've mentioned the joking cycle of broken cards made to sell packs that make treasure tokens for no reason based on what your opponents do. Hole Breacher's the blue one. Yeah, this card's incredibly good. It's super, super strong. Notion Thief is an absolutely bustedly strong card. This is cheaper, less mana intensive, and maybe you don't need cards. This ramps you insanely in response to something like, let's say, a Sphinx's Ref for four. Oh my god, you get four treasures. And they get nothing. They Their card is now gone. It doesn't do anything, and you get four treasures. This is an instant speed blowout city, and then after that, it's kind of like a stacks piece that is going to be a must answer. Additionally, Hull Breacher plus Wheel Fortune equals you win the game. Yeah, you get 21 treasures and draw seven cards. It doesn't even have to be Wheel of Fortune. There's Windfall. There's many other ones. Right. Like I'm just any effect. Yeah, I'm saying it's specific. Like you don't even have to spend 120 dollars. You can spend five cents. Five cents. Yeah, exactly. And play. Was it Dark Deal? <laughs> dark. Yeah, Dark Deal. Oh, <laughs> discard your hand. I'll get a hundred million treasures. It's yeah. just this card. I think we we had it below Jeweled Lotus. Now that things have settled a little bit. Gotten to play with against it a couple times. Well, Breacher seems like it might be better. It's still close. It's it's definitely still close. And it's the card. They, like it can be discussed. Like which one's better, um, especially depending on meta. I think meta game can make a huge difference to where Hole Breacher is amazing in certain metas, and Jewel Lotus is going to be amazing in different types of metas. Yes, I, I definitely agree with that. I don't know if anyone, anyone watching, you've seen the 19 best cards from 2020, and I don't think anyone off the top of their head would be able to guess what our number one is. I don't know. Um, I think this card... Because I wasn't thinking of it. If you've played this card or you have uh, played against it, you you would know this card is number one. Because it, it is. This card is insane. Um, and it really speaks to itself. Uh, it's Teferi, Master of Time. It's a Planeswalker. A Planeswalker. Planeswalker is the worst type in EDH. <laughs> By a pretty wide margin. And this is still the best card of this year. So it's two blue blue for a three loyalty walker. The real bread and butter of this card is that you can activate its abilities each turn, not just your turn, and at instant speed. First, his ability is plus one, draw a card, discard a card, minus three, a creature you don't control phases out, and then it comes back during their next turn. And his ultimate is minus ten. You take two extra turns. This card isn't card advantage at all, but it is card selection, which is super awesome. It lets you dig to protect him, and he is a fast clock. He is literally a two-turn clock to an ultimate that is game breaking hold on he's less than two turns so you, you play him right we'll, we'll go through this he starts at four on your turn when you plus him five six seven your next turn he's at eight nine ten and then on the person before your turn he, on their turn he ultimates <laughs> then you get three turns in a row yeah actually, what yeah completely insane strong card Games just go around him. He's he must answer. If the board is wiped before he comes out, you're get you, ugh, the table just falls into this like depression because they're gonna die. Since planeswalkers ugh. are the worst type, you don't pack heroes downfall because it sucks. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to find like a generous gift or one of those catch alls or figure out a way to attack this thing. It is so annoying that it just wins the game by itself. Two turns. I'm sorry, that is a game win as far as I'm concerned. Or it is. The most heavy advantage you could ask for without winning. Yeah, this card is extremely good. The card selection is awesome. I mean, the fact is, in one go around the table, not only you get to draw four new cards and discard four cards. Two faithless lootings. Yeah, you're going to find good cards and stuff to do. And the thing is, he can dig for card advantage. So even though he's not card advantage himself, he easily digs for the card advantage that would make him even better. It's if you discard a card with flashback, so if you discard a card with flashback, that is card advantage. Yeah, this card is sweet. Um... But that's the list. I mean, this, wow. 20 in 2020. 20, 20 cards in 2020, 2020, 2020. Next year, definitely doing 21 for 21. Yeah, special shout outs to all of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. You guys are the poopy babies, as we call you. The poopiest of babies, only the highest of compliments, I'm sure. Yes, exactly. And if you really like us and you want to support us, um, but you can't do Patreon, but you want to buy Magic Cards, TCG link below in the description you click on that link you go through it and you're like whoa i don't want to buy this crap or whatever we link you to i don't want to buy the very master of time <laughs> yeah exactly i can't afford that i need to buy my 
uh, Yor Yorian. Yeah, exactly, which is only like 50 cents. So do, you can do that as long as you went through the link. TCG player knows. That's that's the link for you. Um, we did have a tidbit. You mentioned it, and I don't remember what you said. So what is our tidbit? A uh, quick thing that I've seen a couple of channels talking about recently was actually should Wizards pay people that they give preview cards to? And I think the long of the short of it for me is no. Um, because Wizards isn't going to get its investment back. Ultimately, it's more of a Wizards is giving them out and it helps people. And it doesn't help Wizards that much. The cards are going to still be hyped and like everyone's going to be excited for Kaldheim even if they're the ones who are spoiling all the cards. I don't look at who previews the card. I mean, I might see their channel when it is previewed, but there's all these sites. There's, you know, there's Magic Spoiler, I think it's called, and then there's Mythic Spoiler. You just go there, see everything. Yeah, I, there's a little text that says where it's from, but I, I, I don't even, like, A, Wizards gifting a spoiler card isn't a ton of boost to the channel that mm -hmm. they give it to. And then B, Wizards doesn't get a ton of, like, hype about it. It just makes, it's just like a, it's like the business exchange Wizards is exchanging some amount of exposure for, like, a thank you. They do get a shout out. Yep. Uh, and, I mean, that's that's the exchange. We're adding more things that Wizards has to get. Yeah, exactly. It feels. I understand the feeling of like content creators put in work to make these videos. Yeah. Um, and I understand that's like people should be paid for their work, but ultimately, in the end, the the preview card is the reward. Um, and that's and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing, but I think it's just what the situation is. I don't think there's really a way to change it because what w Wizards paying people is not going they, as a business. It's not good for them. They could maybe. I wonder if this is off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. They could set up a scenario where Wizards sends them a link, right, and then maybe they get people to go to the link and they could pay based on actual tangible turnout they get from it. So it would be like a variable pay, but that would also cost Wizards so many dollars. Yeah, exactly. But that's, I just wanted to talk about that really quick. I thought it, I thought it was interesting. I saw a couple content creators talking about it. So um, this that, is now a drama channel. We would we would absolutely love to have a preview card. No, we don't exist. Don't even worry about it. Wizards, we're here. No, we're not. We're here. Notice us. <laughs> no, it's not. no, we're here. They're not going to. Please, peace out, tribe scout. Finger guns.